Hey programmers, welcome back. It's time to lecture on a new topic and what I want to do is continue our theme of nested structures and talk about 2D arrays. So recall that previously we learned about nested for loops and that was putting a for loop inside of a for loop. But I can do something similar for arrays. That is what happens when I put an array within an array and we call that a nested array or a two dimensional array. So let's jump right in. Let's just say I create a nice array for us to mess with. So I'll call it let array. And so here I have an array, and let's go ahead and add some elements. So previously in the course, we've done things like store booleans, numbers, and strings as elements of an array. What I can also do is put an array as an element of an array. So when I put an array right inside, and maybe the inner array will contain some strings like A, B. And after that, I could actually add multiple arrays as elements inside of the larger array, right? So what I'll do is put a comma over here. And I'll list out another array of C, D, and E. So this is a two dimensional array because it's an array that contains arrays elements. And when it comes to styling our code for 2D arrays, it's very common practice to actually break lines. That way every inner array or every sub array represents a row of my code, right? So I'll kind of style my code like this and it's much more easier to read. Notice that my outermost brackets represent the total array, right? And inside this is the first element that is just another array. So why don't we start by just console.logging the entire array variable. And I'm going to see my 2D array printed out. So we'll just run this file. And there I see all of my elements inside. And so although array is a two dimensional array, it has all of the same behavior as a regular array, right? So what if I index into this array? So if I console.log array index zero, what that should do is give me the entire first element of this array, which is the subarray of AB. In the same way, if I change my index to index one, I should get the CDE array. Just noting that since an element of the array is another array, this will just reference a whole nother array. And so let's go over a few patterns that you may find useful when it comes to dealing with two dimensional arrays. So instead of just printing out array at index one, what I'll do is I'll save that to a variable. And I'll just say let subarray equal that. And I know that subarray is gonna be this entire CDE array, right? So if I run this code by printing out that subarray, I really get the same behavior, right? So I can feel free to save like different rows of a 2D array uh, into their own variables. And of course, from there, I can feel free to index subarray, right? So subarray is an array. If I did subarray at index two, well, that would refer to the E in this case, right? Because I go zero, one, two. So when it comes to dealing with 2D arrays, all you have to do is worry about using syntax that kind of peels away the layers, right? So line six kind of takes away the first array layer because I grab a subarray from the outer array. And then from there, I can grab an inner element of my subarray. And if you look at code like this, you may also recognize that, hey, if we're using a variable in this way, can we also just double index the original array? And that's actually correct. So the equivalent expression to printing out the E over here would be to just do it in a one-liner. So we'll console.log, and what I can do is just index array. So I can say array at index one. And I know that this highlighted expression evaluates to this array, and so I can actually index that. Remember how JavaScript evaluates, right? It evaluates from left to right. So I'll run this code, and this should still give me back the E. And so I do believe that uh, line nine and line seven are really just as readable. So it's really up to you and how you design your code. As we solve some problems later on in the exercise set, there will be some instances where maybe I want to save uh, the inner subarray as its own variable just for some readability. But do understand both of these different methods. So that's a good baseline for understanding two dimensional arrays. Let me go ahead and add another row to this array. So I'll just add some more letters. And what I want to do now is show you how to iterate through a 2D array. So recall that we can use a loop within a loop. And if I want to iterate through an array within an array, then you still use nested loops, right? So let me just start by using a classic for loop that just iterates through the array variable. So I'll say let i equal zero, i is less than array.length and i plus plus. And I know that in this instance, if I just console.log array at index i, I'm going to be printing out each subarray or basically each row of this 2D array. So notice what I get back. I really only have three total iterations over here. But what if I wanted to have the effect of actually iterating through the innermost elements of this 2D array? In other words, I want to print out A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, right? So what I can do is now actually iterate through this inner array over here. So that's just a matter of nesting a loop, right? Very similar to what we did in the last lesson. So I'll say let J equal zero. 
And here I want to be very, very specific. So this is where your syntax is really important. And so what I'll say is I want to iterate while my inner counter J is less than array I dot length. And this pattern is a little hard to swallow probably for the start. And that's because we're taking the length of the element of an array. But that's totally fine because remember that this element of the array, that is this highlighted expression, is itself an array. So this would give me the inner length. So from here, let us just console.log the element of that array. So here I would have to console.log array at index i at index j. We're using that same double index pattern from before, right? Saying just array at index i gives me the correct row, but saying j after that gives me a particular element of that row. So before I run this code, let's have an expectation. Notice that I have two console.logs in the space of my code. Just inside of my outer loop, I just print out the row. And then right after I print out the entire row, I'm going to iterate and print out the individual elements of that row. So I'm going to see the AB row, and then AB by itself, and then the CDE row, and then CDE by themselves. So let's run this code. So it looks like I have a little typo here. And looking at what I did wrong, can you spot it? Well, on line nine, I wrote I again over here. So you should be using J, right? I want distinct counters. That was actually letting me go outside of the range of the array. So let's run this code now. And this is our correct output, right? And so from here, let me just clear out line eight. So now this code just iterates over the inner elements of my array. But I think this is a scenario where I would like to clean up my code. So I find like this highlight expression on line eight, that a little tedious to understand, and maybe possibly also line nine. And so what I'll do is I'll actually save those subarrays into their own variables. What I'll do is let subarray equal array at index i, and then I can always just reference subarray from that point on. And this really clean ups the later patterns in my code. Now it's not super obvious that I'm dealing with 2D arrays all the way through because I'm kind of peeling away layers uh, in this structured code. So let me run this code now. And I do prefer this code a little bit more, right? But maybe just do what makes sense for you. A few things I want to point out about these nested loops that print out elements of a two-dimensional array is, notice that on my inner loop, I reference the length of the subarray. Because it looks like in my example, at least, sometimes these subarrays have different length, right? The first subarray has a length of two, while the other two subarrays have a length of three. So it's really important that individually, I reference that particular subarray's length, because it can vary, right? And so now that we have a way to iterate through elements of a two-dimensional array, really the possibilities are endless, right? We could combine this pattern with any other patterns that we used previously, right? So let's say I just want to go through the motions of maybe constructing a pattern that actually does something. Maybe I'll create a nice variable string over here, have that be an empty string. Then maybe what I want to do is inside of my innermost loop actually take the current element that I'm iterating through and add it to the end of this string. That's pretty straightforward. I just have to say, take that string variable and concatenate it with the current element that I'm iterating through. And afterwards, I can feel free to console.log that string variable. All right, programmers, that's all I got for this short little lecture on two-dimensional arrays. Hopefully they make a lot of sense since we've drilled single arrays a lot, as well as went through the motions of nested loops. And hopefully now you notice like the method to the madness, right? We're building up these concepts as we go and they actually utilize each other, right? Which is why I always say, it's really important that we don't miss a step. So like you expect in the very next section, what we're gonna do is do some problems using 2D arrays.